Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on lighting in Crater. So um, in this tutorial, we're going to look at the different types of light that you can use in Crater, how to use them, and some of the effects you can get with those lights. Firstly, you'll see I've got this, uh, this world here, which is kind of jungly. It's uh, a bit of a jungle expedition. And you can see it's globally lit. So that means that the sun's out, everything is shining. Um, and it's kind of lacking drama because of that. Uh, and there's even it's even bright sunshine inside this cave. So we need to remedy that using some of the lighting um, that is available from the light primitive in Crater. Uh, but firstly, let's make sure it's nighttime so that we can really see the most of the lights that we're going to be using. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this start time to just after sunset, which is about eight o'clock. So you can see it's nice and dark now, um, including inside this cave. So you can muck around with those settings in the world settings here, the start time and the time of day and that sort of stuff. Um, there's, diff there's different qualities of the light depending on the time of day, but I'll let you explore that. So let's get on to the different types of light now. So firstly, let's add a light within this cave. Um, there we go. So you can see that it's lit up. Um, it's also buried a little bit in the floor. So we just move that up. There we go. So you can see that now this cave is kind of lit. Um, great. However, it's using all of the default settings of this light. So let's have a look at what those default settings are and what we can do to change them. So if I go over to this entity editor over here, you can see that the default type of light is the point light. So a point light is lights up a type of area. Okay, so everywhere around this is lit. If I change this to a spotlight, you'll see that it changes. Firstly, you'll see that the visualization changes here. <clears throat> and then you'll also see that uh, it's now lighting in a specific direction. So that's really good for a spotlight. It's, it goes in a specific direction. Then let's look at the directional light. Now the directional light lights the entire world in that in a specific direction. So you can see it's even though the light is here in this cave, you can see out here, it's also doing the same lighting effect. Directional lights are really, really good for like adding a bit of um, a bit of a feeling. So you could change it to blue or you could change it to like a, a green kind of otherworldly or like ethereal um, vibe. So that's that's a really fun thing to do with directional lights. But um, we're not going to do that <laughs> with our jungle scene, even though it looks cool. Um, uh, the final type of light is the rectangle light. So this is a lot like I'm just going to turn that back to full light. The, uh, the rectangle light is a lot like the spotlight, except that it is a box rather than a cone of light. So it's uh, it's it's going in one direction, but it's you can see this hard edge at the bottom here. Uh, and that, that shows that it's a rectangle and it's pointing in that direction. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, this oil lantern. That's what that's called. It's an oil lantern. Uh, I'm going to make this oil lantern um, have a light. So I'll grab a light. I'll put it on the oil lantern. Uh, and you can see uh, in this hierarchy menu, this light has now been added to the uh, it's actually the particle effect within the oil uh, oil lantern. So let's add it to the oil lantern, position it. Um, oh, put that back there. Let's put this uh, zero, zero, zero. And then let's just make sure grid is snap is off and just move the light up so that it's in the middle of our oil lantern. Great. So this is a very bright oil lantern at the moment. Um, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is if I scroll down in this entity editor over here, you can see the different properties. So we can change the color. Uh, and then there's these weird ones which have got strange names. So firstly, color, pretty self-explanatory. Um, an oil lantern might be more like an orangey, yellowy hue. So we can kind of drop that to something like that. And already you can see it's it's changing the feeling of this room just by making it more like a warm glow, more like an oil lantern. So color affects the color of the light. And um, the darker the color, the darker the light, the lighter the color, the lighter the light. Um, so it's, it's quite an easy way to get like um, different types of lighting effect just using the color. Um, so we've got that. The next thing to look at is the intensity of the light. So the intensity changes how strong this light source is. Um, at the moment, it's set to eight, 
which is quite bright, but it's it's not as bright as it could go. So, uh, you know, the lowest you can go is one um, or even zero, which is no light. But one is, you know, very, very little amounts of light. Um, or you can really crank it up. You can go kind of nuclear with this. Um, so you can see <laughs> really, really bright. Um, almost can't actually see anything. It's so bright. So the intensity changes how strong the light is. Um, I'm going to set this intensity to four. And then we've also got the exponent. So the exponent is a really interesting value because what the exponent does is the exponent manages the, the drop off of the light. So you could see um, this uh, sort of wire edge here, which is to do with the attenuation. We'll come on to that in a minute. The exponent manages how soft from the source to that edge, how soft the light is, the gradient of the light, the drop off. So um, the lower the exponent, the harsher the drop off. So if I set that to one or even zero, let's set it to zero so you can really get to grip. So you can see when I say the drop off, I mean that by setting it really low, you've got this really hard edge. Um, which might be useful in some situations. I don't think an oil lantern really has that kind of hard edge. Um, you can also make it really, really soft. Um, so a hundred, like it, the highest I think it can go to is 16, um, which means even though the light reaches this far or the impact of the light reaches this far, um, it's actually like such a gradual fade out um, that it actually looks like the light is really just focused around here. Um, so for my oil lantern, I would set that exponent to something soft, but still quite, um, you know, I would set it to something like five. So it's, it's quite soft, but it's not, it's, it's not harsh either. It's, it's kind of in, in, in between there. Um, the next property on the list is the specular. So this is really good to see on metal and things like that. So I might crank, if I crank the intensity up a bit, just to show you what this does. So you can see on the metal, actually let's go even brighter, a thousand. Okay, so you can see on the metal here, we've got some shine. This is a gold thing, it's shiny. Ooh, shiny. Uh, and the specular adds that shine, it reflects the light. Okay, so the more, so by having specular on, we can see that it's reflecting that shine. If I turn specular off, you can see it turns to a matte. So now everything that is impacted by this light is, is will have a matte effect. It, it won't have that shine. So whether that's the mud on the floor, um, whether that's metal it hits, it does. It won't have that reflection, that shine. Um, specular off can be quite good if you've got lots of lights and you want to focus just the specular on one or two of those. Um, or it could be really important if you've got a huge level or lots of stuff going on and you want to manage the performance of your game a little bit, you might want to um, turn off the specular on a few of your lights just to optimize your game somewhat. Um, I'm going to leave the specular on. I'm just going to put the intensity back to back to the original value for our little uh, oil lantern here. In fact, I think that might be, yeah, I think, um, yeah, something like that. Tweaking the values is okay. The next uh, uh, variable, the next property on this list is the attenuation. So the attenuation um, is helpfully visualized by this golden wire, um, this golden wire sphere, which actually shows you the the reach of the light. So that's what the attenuation does, is it it sort of quantifies how far the light will travel. Um, so we, the lower the number, the uh, less distance it will travel. So if I change it from 1,000 to 100, you can see that this is really localized light now. So this is just in this area. Uh, and similarly, if I change it to 100,000, that light is bigger than the entire level. You can see it's huge. So, um, so this might be quite interesting, actually, if you were like trying to draw people to a specific location, now they can, uh, no matter where they are in the level, that light is bright and in the middle. So uh, the attenuation is how far this light will reach. Um, and this is just a simple oil lantern. Um, and there's going to be other lighting in this scene. So I'm going to make this very, very localized. It's literally just to make that lantern look like it's lighting something, even though it's not lighting anything. Um, and then finally, shadows. 
is the last little property down here. So um, this is really important for realism because you can see under the table where there is no light, it's it's eight o'clock and we're in a cave and yet you can still make out the floor really easily. So let's turn on shadows and there you go. So now um, the light doesn't reach the floor and you can see this adds a really nice effect on this oil lantern um, because because we've got the light within the mesh, it's actually casting shadows of all the um, of the the metal that surrounds the glass on the oil lantern. So it looks it looks really nice when you put, put shadows on. You might not want to have shadows on every single light in your scene. Again, that might be a bit of a performance um, optimization you want to make, or maybe you just don't need it, or maybe you're just trying to light an area. So you can play around with these different settings to get different types of um, kind of feelings and lighting within your game. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. You've got your intensity. So we've got color, which changes the color, the intensity, which manages how bright that light is, the exponent, which was the one um, which manages how how harsh that drop off was. You've got the specular, which was the reflection on things like metal and mud. You've got the attenuation, which was how far the light reaches. Uh, and then you've got the shadows as well. So you can really play around with this um, and have some good fun. So for example, I've got this flashlight here and I wanna make that really shine on there. So what I do is a spotlight and I would, um, with a spotlight, you've got different values as well. You've got these inner and outer. So this is managing the shape of the cone. So you can see the cone is really wide at the moment. So I could make that really more, a lot more focused um, in that area, maybe even dropping it all the way down to this. Um, let's crank that attenuation to 3000 and you can see that's really added some drama to our scene. In fact, let's have a look what that's like in game. So if I run into here, you can see that's really like highlighted and that's drawing the player's eye to that location. Um, I've also got a, um, a, what's it called? A, a particle effect here, which is the light beam. So you can combine things. And in, in here, I've got an effect, which is uh, the candle. So you can kind of combine effects and lighting um, to really add some drama and, and get creative um, in your scene. So that's, um, that's the kind of conclusion of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope that now you go away and make some cool lighting in your scenes. Yeah.